I shouldn't even say how many, uh, 20, 20, uh, <laughs> years ago. Um, and then I went back and got my PhD in leadership. And then my focus is on innovation. Um, but I also teach, um, I also teach some quantitative classes. So I also teach you the accounting class. So I kind of like to do a lot of different things. I need leadership and, and innovation and accounting, believe it or not. Um, and so I feel like there's a huge opportunity for people in our industry. And that's why I like to talk to students because I think sometimes students think that, oh, that means you're going to work in a restaurant or in a hotel. We've been really bad, I think, as an industry also, like showing like somebody in a chef hat where, I don't know, I mean, Mark wanted to be a chef and he's, a, I love to be able to go to meetings when he cooks and stuff like that. But I don't know that any of our students really want to be chefs. That's not why they're in the business or hospitality programs. Mostly they're doing it because they like to work with people or they have themselves experienced great times when they've gone to hotels or restaurants or other experiences. But we really have seen that over the last decade or so, our, the students that we're getting into our our program, and it's probably your, the case with you as well, are wanting to explore a variety of different ways to be able to be in this economy of experiences, if you will. And so that means that it could be that you're working in recreation or in, um, in theme parks or at a travel kind of a company or in national parks. There's a lot more of outdoor going on now. We have a lot in our program that relates to surf because that's the passion of one of our instructors. And so um, you know a lot about experiences already. Uh, you can go to the next one, Mark, um, because you've been a consumer of an experience. But we wanted to share a little bit more about what the jobs are because I think that's where students don't really, um, they aren't really sure what that means. What are all the opportunities and how do you get kind of into uh, the exploration of these potential opportunities and what are all these different kinds of opportunities? So today we just kind of wanted to talk about the kinds of different jobs potentially that, um, that exist and the jobs that our students are are doing and working toward. And then also kind of some of the preparation that if you do indeed believe that you want to be one of those people who helps make people's lives wonderful, emotional, connected, um, you know, meaningful, and I think that's a great thing to want to, to do, then how do you prepare to be able to do that? So when you do either tra transfer to our school or somewhere else, um, or once you graduate, how, um, how you can kind of start um, immediately in this, in this great field. Okay, well, let's take a look at some jobs. These are real. Um, and if you do your own searches, you'll find, you know, that there are really cool jobs out there. Um, but just listen to the title and just think about what the work would be and just ask yourself the question, does that sound like something that I would you know, like to do? So for example, um, Hard Rock Hotels, in or, or, actually not just in Orlando, but others as well, have what's called a vibe manager. And they are essentially responsible for creating the atmosphere. So they play music, they set the ambiance, they, they establish tours um, and live music events, but they're sort of like a music manager. And again, just think about that. If you're a music person, if you really like music, um, you know, if you're if, if you're going to work every day and you're playing around with music and creating those experiences, that's not work. That's mm -hmm. that's fun. That's something that energizes you, and that's kind of what, where you want to land. I had to do an interview today um, with a student, and one of the questions was, "What do you like about your job? And what don't you like about your job?" And one of them, what I like about my job is is my freedom and my choice. I can choose which projects I get involved in. And I did not have a negative. I couldn't. I couldn't really think of something that that really bugged me or whatever. Well, Lori bugs me a little bit, but yeah. above me on that, I, I love my job. I love what I do. Um, I don't like going to meetings a long time, a lot, but on the whole, that's a pretty nice place to be. So again, matching up your interest or your passion, I should say, with something that actually pays you money. That, that's kind of the ideal situation if you can find it. And I wonder uh, how many of you, just for a minute, are already vibe managers like are you the person who is kind of like you know the vibe manager if there's a party are you the one that's kind of like oh i feel like we need more music or we need to change the music or let me oh, you. are you kind of the mayor <laughs> of the place walking around and so are you already maybe a vibe manager in your own space you might already be good at it and so yeah. it's kind of a, a cool thing to think about food i i do all the cooking in my house i'm you know 99 percent of it when we do when we have get togethers I, I do a full on catering thing. I just, I love doing that. So it's kind of the same situation, doing something you really love versus doing it because someone's twisting your arm and, and sort of making you do it. Uh, number two, beer concierge. This one will be popular at the, the Hotel Vermont in Burlington. 
Burlington's a big ski area, as, from what I recall. Um, so they do tasting, education. Beer in San Diego, for example, you know, has become super popular. We, we are a beer destination now. Um, and much like wine used to be and coffee became, you know, there's a whole subculture with, with beer and how it's created and what grains are used. And I mean, Lori's a real big uh, beer person, very particular kinds. I get mocked for ordering Bud Light when I go out. And Mark drinks chick beer. People, um, throw, people throw rocks at me. I don't know me. if I'm allowed to say that or not, but he mm-hmm. drinks, uh, he doesn't drink real beer. And I don't yeah. know, these. a lot of these students might be too young to drink, but, um, but right now, like, beer is another one of those things where it's expensive. I mean, beer can be, I think if, if you go to the ballpark at the Padres, I think it might even be up to $18 for some beers, but pretty much if you're going to get any kind of a craft beer, you know, it's a, it's a much more than just, oh, I'm just going to down as many as I can. It's this big experience. And so having the knowledge and the background and being able to talk about beer and a lot of people, again, are you that person who, when it comes time, you might say, oh, I'd like to even brew my own beer. You know, that's just a natural passion of yours. That's the kind of thing you might want to think about doing. So what? Trulies are no good. Is that what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> truly, truly raspberry or watermelon. All right. Moving on. Wildlife yeah. lead at the Grand Hyatt Kauai. And what this person is responsible for is all of the immersive animal experiences. So they'll bring over, well, Kauai has their own chicken population. I don't know if you were aware of that, but they, there's chickens everywhere. I don't know what happened. There was some sort of thing that happened and all these chickens running around, but above me on that. So whether it's tortoises or turtles or um, parrots. And, I mean, th- that's, think about that for a minute. If your passion is, is plant uh, animals, then you can actually go to school for you know veterinary science or to become a vet assistant even, but end up actually doing that in a hotel. Again, how long, you know, how, has that been a, a real part of hospitality for a very long time? Probably not really. Um, but those opportunities are, are happening more and more. Why? Because hotels are trying and resorts in particular are trying to find ways to not only enhance revenue because it, you know they'll bring around some free ones, but guess what? That's kind of a loss leader, meaning that they're they're showing you the bird because they want you to go pay for the premium part of it, and they need people to be able to deliver those those experiences. So again, think about that. If you're an animal lover, there are more options maybe than you even thought about before. And beautiful, beautiful spot by the way. If you take a look at the picture, it's gorgeous. Um, another one is Enology Butler at the Shelbourne Dublin Hotel. Genealogy, not an analogy is the study of wine. That's genealogy. So what is genealogy? Marie, thank you for joining. Hello, Marie. What is genealogy? Do you know what that is? Jordan, what do you is think? Is it like the antres- ancestry.com stuff? Very good. Exactly. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's a little creepy because that room down the bottom is kind of creepy, but it looks like a nice hotel. But that's what they do. They'll actually work with you on the genealogy of your family and, and track your, your family background. Again, just non-traditional. You would never think that that would be part of something in the hospitality or the experience economy, but the experience piece of it changes that. It gives it more versatility and, and, and sort of covers a wider scope. Uh, one or I two. A lot, of pe- a lot of people are putting their favorite drinks in the chat right now, which is great to be able to watch. Yeah, we'll watch. But um, so Ryan Wen- Reynolds' wife, she started a company. Um, what's his wife's name? What's Study Ryan? of Genes. <laughs> what's, what's Ryan Ren- Reynolds' wife's name? Uh, Blake hey, Lively. Blake Lively. Blake Lively. Yeah. So she started a company called Buzzy. Some buzz. Some anyway. It's all non-alcoholic drinks. And again, you know, she started that company. It's all about non-alcoholic drinks, and it's a very cool, you know, potential direction to go into. I'm typing into the chat. So someone said the study of genes, G-E-N-S. And I said, no, the study of genes, J-E-A-N-S, genes. Mm. Okay, this one is really, really cool. Um, uh, Waste to wealth manager and mushroom consultant at the Suniva Fushi Resort in Maldives, 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 Maldives. And so there's a couple of different things that happen there, but sustainability, I'm not sure if you're aware, has become a really big selling point and almost a requirement for a lot of hotels and resorts. The people are are willing to pay extra and are making choices based on whether or not the the resort, the restaurant, the hotel, or the organization is sustainable. And they they make it a conscious choice to try to be a sustainable organization. So this resort, if you look at it, is beautiful. And they have one person who's primarily responsible for that, including a mushroom lab. I don't get the mushroom lab part of it, 
But the thing I did want to highlight for you is, can you see how much the, the bottom picture costs per night? But you get nine bedrooms, it looks like. Yes, it's nine bedrooms, so you can bring your whole family, <laughs> bring all your friends. It's, it's $35,000. Mm -hmm. So I guess for 35 grand a night, you can afford to have a waste to wealth manager and mushroom consultant. So interesting choice. We Our final four, one. We just had Four Seasons come, and that's the kind of thing that Four Seasons is really when they come and talk talk to our students they're encouraging students that have particular kinds of passions like who knows that somebody you know is into mushrooms but there's somebody and they everybody has their own little quirky things I love that you know about humans and so they they find places for people to be able to use those talents in ways because if you're wanting to create this collective experience then you know if you're really into beef jerky who knows you know maybe you can turn it into something so I just <laughs> I think it's very cool the idea beef jerky of manager stuck well, you know what they should make mushroom beer that would be a really Really cool idea. Mushroom right. manager. Mushroom manager. <laughs> Super Mario. You know, look at it this way. For your next gig, that looks really interesting on a resume. It's a conversation starter. It's like, what, what exactly did you do there? Um, this next one is uh, a chocolate here at the Waldorf Astoria in Panama. And it's exactly what you'd think. If you look at some of the pictures, it's just crafting kind of these really artistic um, chocolate sculptures, chocolate, um, what are they called? Um, not just desserts, but pedophores, but you're really creating, uh, you know, cool stuff that doesn't look like chocolate. And then you touch it and it's chocolate. I mean, again, if that were your area, if you're, it's interesting when it comes to food, there's the baking community and then there's the cooking community. I'm clearly way over here on the cooking community, but the baking people have their own little world and they love to bake and they're super creative with it. And that's kind of where you would express yourself. So let's, let's put this into some context. All right. Um, you can do human resource management. And one thing for you to think about is that all of the traditional business functions of any organization, human resources, operations, finance, accounting, um, the, what would be another really big Interior one? design is another Interior avenue design. that. But those functions are all, you can do all of those things, but you can do it in a place like that, or you can do it in a place like this. And one of my really good friends is the human resources vice president at the Breakers Hotel in Florida. And if you look at that building, I don't know, when people just drive up, it's almost like when you wear a suit, right? You just act a little differently. You carry yourself differently. You speak, you use bigger words, um, sometimes in the wrong way, but still you try, yeah. to, you try to be real sharp about it. But just look at the hallway, look at the dining room, look at that one um, banquet room where if you were going to get married there, I mean, it just got... It's just at a completely different level, right? So when you go on your break, that's where you could go. Or you could go be working there. You can be a marketing manager in this organization, which is ice cold, white walls, plastic, you know, everything. There's no feeling behind it, right? There's nothing that's, that, that is warm or enticing. Or uh, Rancho Valencia Resort and Spa here in San Diego. And again, if you look at that property, it's beautiful. Right, it's got kind of get that old Spanish architecture to it. So, I guess the idea is that you have way more options than you might think. Everyone thinks of, you know, experiences and hospitality as being, it's got to be a hotel, it's got to be a restaurant, it's got to be an event planning company, and it doesn't. I mean, it could be, but you don't necessarily need to be just an operations doing front desk, for example. You could be a customer experience manager. You could be doing human resource management for the organization. You could be doing marketing, social media management for them. You're just in a different environment and maybe one that you really can get passionate about. So let's talk a little bit. Actually, before we go to the next step, are there any questions so far? We have a student with a hand raised. Jordan. Go ahead, Jordan. What do you got? Uh, mine is more of a comment. That's just That was some excellent marketing right there. Would you rather be a marketing manager of this thing that looks like a set from that 2000 show the office or would yeah. you rather be a marketing manager here at this place that looks like a holy temple looks like a heavenly temple of some sort <laughs> yeah, it is, okay. it is but, it, but it's also it's also pretty real right that that um we we do have choices we have students who um really want to go to hawaii all the time and they they find jobs but they're in hr or they're in marketing or they're in accounting and so you wouldn't necessarily again you wouldn't put the two together you think you have to be in front of guests you don't always have to be so there are a lot of other options there. In the, the traditional other, office. Yeah, the yeah, traditional. Exactly. Exactly. And you get better perks too, by the way. 
you get discounted rates, which is nice. You get to go to the pool and it's good stuff. Other questions, anybody? Meaning of life. What's the meaning of life, Mark? No questions, really? All right, let's move on. Let's talk about preparation. And so how do you get there? That's kind of the big, next big question is what do you do to kind of get ready if this is the area that you want to go down, if that's the path you're looking for? Lori, I'll pass it off to you. Yeah, so I kind of put this together just thinking about where you all might be. And I know that there might be some non-traditional students, but right now, now you're probably thinking that you're in your first couple years of college and so maybe you're going to transfer you know the next one mark um and so i was thinking about how do you start to do this exploration because not you don't just start looking and then the chocolatier kind of comes up um mark do you want to go to the next one so if you are um if you're thinking about your kind of college um, college career and student life and your experience, we like to think about it, and I think this is a great way to think about it, is that you have to take these classes for sure, um, but there's also high impact experiences or extracurricular kinds of things that everybody does, is encouraged, encouraged to do, and then finally there's kind of internships and doing careers and jobs, and if you, you can try to help those mesh together and make them kind of overlap, I think that can be a really valuable way to have a meaningful experience as opposed to your college just being kind of this um, collection of, you know, credits, like let me check off as many units as I as I sort of need. So that's kind of the approach that we take. And we try to think about the, these three things, classes, extracurricular things, and jobs and internships throughout the different um, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior years. Mark, you want to go on? Um, and so let me so throw, throw one thing out there, Lori. Just yeah. That, that one of the things we try to let students know is that not all graduates are created equal. And that has nothing to do with the characteristics of the person or gender or anything like that. It has to do with what you do when you're actually there. And there are some students who engage in these extracurricular or impactful experiences like going abroad that are life-changing experiences. And then when they sit in front of an employer, they just, they sound different. They sound enriched. They sound, um, the, you know, they've got the wonder of, of international travel and understanding other cultures that maybe someone who's never done that, you know, does not have. So even if you don't go down this path of the, the experience economy, just be thinking about what could you be doing to round out your experiences, to take on leadership roles, to be more involved, because those are the kinds of things that really do differentiate with employers. They and they also just make things much more enriching. I mean, there are most people don't say, oh, yeah, I remember this one class where I had to write this paper. I mean, it's usually, oh, I remember this experience. I went on this student trip or I got to do this volunteer experience at a surf competition or I met this mentor who really changed my, changed my life. It's rarely kind of this. I mean, all of us are you know, who teach want it, want it to be that, you know, what you're learning is important, but what you're able to do and how you apply that, I think is just much more meaningful. And so we really try to think about this more enriching kind of an experience. But uh, like Mark said, if you wait though, and you just kind of say, well, I'm just going to first ch check off all the boxes with my classes, and then I'll go look for a job after that, you're kind of kind of be behind probably. And you also won't have the opportunity to, to find out what you don't like. So you might yeah. have to then start it with jobs and then find out you don't like it before you kind of can move on. So we, we want to, you want to try to do as many things as you possibly can so that you can see like, oh, these are my people or these aren't my people. Um, or I know I thought I want to do that, but I don't. We have a lot of people who come in and think that they want to work weddings and they th see it as this romantic, you know, wonderful, fabulous kind of a thing. And it's a grind, man. And people are not all nice to you you and and they walk away going no thank you I want to do something something else and then we have other students that say no there's no way I would ever want to work in food services for example and then they get connected to you know somebody who's a mushroom manager and that you know mm -hmm. the world just kind of opens up to them so it's you owe it to yourself I think to try stuff and when you're in college that's the time that you can indeed try stuff and so that's what we try to facilitate too um, in our program and so if you're a freshman it's all about just exploring and the first thing is awareness so you need to kind of know what is out there um you know how do you find out what is indeed out there and you've got a you've got a group now that part of it is what you're doing right now and there's probably other listservs that you can get on and ways that you can find out well what are all these different kinds of kinds of jobs once you kind of can start to the point where you're getting some awareness, then it's um, the next first step might be to volunteer. So we we don't see volunteering as, you know, just free labor. It's usually a one day or half a day, short term kind of a thing 
a learning experience, but it's a way for you to, to be able to go to a surf competition or um, go to a wedding, or um, we have a group of students that go and work at Coachella for a short period of time. Again, seeing, you know, it in, in, before you take a job, just doing some kind of volunteering or short-term kind of, um, kind of experiences. Hey, you Lori, can do job shadows. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Let me just, ju just jump in on one second, because all these things, so they, they presuppose that you're comfortable doing them. And some of the comments that we're getting in the chat are about how difficult sort of, you know, coming off of COVID, um, being sort of socially isolated, and now being thrust back into being, you know, you're just, you're just expected to be normal again and act normal and be comfortable with all that. We spent this entire semester um, just trying to reestablish our culture at San Diego State in the, in the hospitality program. One of the things that we focused on was making sure that we could develop trust with our students and let them know that their welfare was the most important thing. Why? Because we noticed that even though we were back live, there were a lot of people who were clearly uncomfortable, clearly anxious, clearly um, a little freaked out about having to be put back into social situations that, that, you know, no, we're having people come on campus from a different organization. I, I don't want to go say hello to that person. I don't know them. And I don't feel particularly confident in doing that. So if you're experiencing that, it is not uncommon at all. Um, and the only thing I would throw out to you to think about is to just, you know, you don't eat a sandwich in one bite, right? You, you take one small bite of it at a time. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and what you do is you just take it in small doses and you do things that you're comfortable with and then get a little more comfortable and a little more comfortable. But um, there are options for, for help if you need it. There are options to, you know, people around you to chat to make you feel more comfortable about doing these kinds of things. And if, if you were to read out to Mark or I or your other professors, we can probably find somebody who would love to take you somewhere. Like, oh, I've done it. I'd love to take a new a new student to an organizational meeting with me. That's a, sometimes a good way to get um, you know get started. It's an easy toe dipper. Just just tag along with someone else, and then um, and then see that it's not that scary. And that when you go meet industry people, they love students. I mean, they love to talk to students. They're all very open um, to talking to talking to students. But like Mark said, it can be. It, can definitely be a scary kind of a thing. Um, we have informationals a lot where a lot of companies just come on campus and and students, um, even though they're not ready to get a job or even and, you know, try to interview, just going and listening to what they have to say at these informational meetings is another easy way to just get started when you're a freshman. And then certainly if there's, if you wanted to be doing any kind of part-time work, um, you know, that's another way to, to start to explore. So when you're a freshman, see if you can tag along with someone, um, play the student card and say, hey, I have to do this project and I have to, I have to talk to somebody in an industry that I think I might like, or I have to follow someone around for a couple of hours. If you play that student card, they'll usually say yes, um, more open to students probably than, than professors. So try to, you know, just reach out and say, I'm just trying to, you know, get exposed to stuff. And people are pretty good. I think about, about, about that as you move into, and I see that we're already kind of maybe not, um, we're getting towards the end of our time, but as you're a sophomore, then you want to do some practicing of things. So that's where you want to try to integrate some of the things that you do outside of the class with your projects in class. So a lot of times when you start to get projects, they might, you might get a project that you can customize in some way in terms of the context that you do it in or um, or who you might talk to. And so try to link that up if you can. If you're asked to go and interview someone, um, don't interview your aunt because she's the easiest person. Interview someone that works in, um, in, a, in a restaurant or a hotel or a music festival or concert or um, a surf kind of a place. I use those constantly because that's what our students like. Um, and that that's a way to try to make those connections. And then the other thing that we encourage our students to do is to go on student trips and we have student organizations, a ton of them, um, kind of like the organization that you have here. And we use those student organizations as ways for people to kind of find their niche and be able to connect with students and then um, go on trips or those trips can be short term or long term. And we have a lot of scholarship and funding available for that. And then finally, once you get to be a junior and a senior, that's when you start thinking about internships, you might really um, hone in on one direction and maybe even take on a project where, where you're a leader. And so you kind of go through these, you know, baby steps and then a little bit more and then, and then a little bit harder. And it's never too late to start thinking about um, what it is that you want to, what you want to kind of do. Hey, Jordan, do you have a, a question or a comment? 
I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yes, I, I was one of the. Actually, I was. I feel like, actually, honestly, I was the only person in the chat who was talking about uh, the impact of COVID nineteen, the emotional and mental health impact of COVID nineteen, and how it can be challenging to bounce back from COVID nineteen as the world moves on, and some people still take precautions. We're in an unusual place in the pandemic, where some people are moving on, some people are still exercising caution. You know, wearing a mask, avoiding crowds. So one of my concerns about one of my concerns about uh, missing out on normal life during college. I've already keep in mind I've already drafted out like three scenarios of how COVID could impact my college experience. So far, I've yet to be on the campus because I'm one of those people who's still taking precautions. I have yet to be in a traditional classroom environment for college. So I guess my question. So saying all that, my question would be: What advice would you give to students who graduate? Who well, we we don't know what the future holds, but given what we know right now, what advice would you give students who graduate in the post-COVID world and enter careers? losing all that valuable social time as a result of COVID and the isolation. So there's, there's a ton of stuff that you can do virtually. And what we had to pivot to virtually in the meetings and events field, especially um, that a lot of that is kind of stuff around so there's a lot of this hybrid or even virtual things airbnb does a lot of virtual experiences for example so i think there's ways that you can still do things virtually and so i would say perhaps that you would try to we try to you try to get connected with uh, an internship or a, um, a job shadow where it's this kind of virtual kind of a thing and i think you'd be surprised that there are indeed those opportunities i start with air airbnb experiences um, but also reach out to people that you might know or either either Mark and I as well. And we can kind of connect you with some of those virtual experiences. But I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of for sure. And I think there's a lot of, of things that can happen even in that virtual environment. You can certainly do a lot of looking around and checking things out. Um, you can even attend virtual experiences, again, to see if this is the kind of your place uh, or not. You can certainly do interviews um, online. So I, it sounds like you're not using it as an excuse not to do things. I think that that's good. Um, but there, and there's a lot of ways that you can, that you can do it. I, I would agree with everything Lori said. And then also there are, you know, there are ways to minimize um, exposure, you know, and doing things outside tends to be a little bit, a little bit safer. And so maybe that's a starting point. And then you begin to work into others. But again, I think you, you don't, you don't go from, um, you know, zero to 60 in, in three seconds. I think you start small where, they, where you're comfortable and then you expand and expand and expand at, at the rate that you're comfortable with. And I think your network is incredibly important too. So the people that you count on and the people that you care about and they care about you are there for you so that when you do feel a little bit awkward or, or anxious or whatever, you have that person to reach out to. I think that's really important. So I think, Lori, I think you're right. We are dialing down on time just, just very quickly about our program. Our fo we, we're, we have two basically degree programs, um, hospitality and tourism management, and also recreation and tourism management. And so the emphasis areas are, are there, so you can see them. So hotels, meetings, events, restaurants, and travel gaming. We also have recreation systems, sustainability, outdoor resources. The two students tend to be a little bit different. The, um, the hospitality students have a little bit more of the profit motive, I would ar argue, where the RTM students have a little bit more of an intrinsic value motivation, connection to um, nature, connection to, connection to outdoors, that kind of thing. Um, and I think but, there's a bunch of business students on in this group, if, if that's correct. Um, and the uh, it's easy to transfer into HTM, the HTM side. The um, the classes that you take in business is an easy easy to transfer into the HTM side. Yeah. When we started, we were um, a joint program with the College of Business, and our program had all of the courses that you need to get into the, the management major. So we're rigorous, but also in a really good way with a lot of good experiential kinds of things. Um, we have a, a bunch of different ways to connect with with Lori and I, and I'll, I'll put the other slide back up where our, our email addresses are. Um, but just reach out, say hello, um, reach out to Corinne as well. And if you have questions, we're absolutely happy to answer them. Christina Jeffries is our, um, she's really responsible for a lot of the student experience stuff or internships, but also placement and, and jobs, which we're at like 99%, which is really a great number. Um, but there's lots of people that are around that can answer questions. My suggestion, if you are ever interested in San Diego State, talk to students. Talk to people like yourself that are in the program. They're the ones who are going to give you the, the real answer. What are the classes like? How big are they? Are they engaging? What do you like? What do you dislike? They'll tell you. And then you make your decision based on what you 
you hear from them. You okay. can also come visit our campus, come yep. sit in on a class, and you can also even, um, Jordan, you might, you could join a virtual class, you know, ask if, get permission to, to come and join a virtual yep. class, you know, a way to sit in on a class virtually. Let's see, are there any questions we can answer? Anybody have a question? Let's share, let's share. I, I actually have a question. Hi, it's Christina. Hey, Christina. Um, so uh, two, two questions. Uh, first question is how impacted, since Maricosta isn't in your service area, how impacted is your program? Are you guys pretty full? Are you, are you um, taking students for spring and fall and spring 24, wait, spring 24 potentially? Um, what's what is what does that look like for a, a Maricosta student who would be interested probably in transferring in maybe spring or fall of 24? So for sure, um, the word impacted has a particular academic thing, meaning the program has been designated as right. impacted. Yeah. Now, everything at San Diego State now is considered impacted. We are not full. In fact, our numbers have declined um, a bit as many of the um, hospitality and tourism programs have declined. People think they can't get into San Diego State and you shouldn't think that um, because there's a lot of students that are getting in with GPAs that you wouldn't, you'd be surprised. And so don't ever let that be your barrier, apply. And then if you don't get accepted, if you appeal, then we can know about you. So um, we, there's some leeway with departments. I mean, I can't say like, I can get you in or anything like that, but it's, it's not something that you shouldn't just immediately dismiss that you couldn't get into, get into it. Um, and if you came and talked to, um, talk to us in advance, get us on the, you know, on the radar and stuff. I mean, if, if you don't meet the basic requirements, you know, we can't do stuff for you, but certainly if we know who you are, that's helpful. It is. Okay. And our program is, we call it a boutique program. You know, the, the right number for us is about 400 with about hundred coming in and about hundred graduating. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, we do have room. I think the, you know, post COVID, um, a lot of people got nervous. They're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, there's no hospitality jobs. So let me just shift out a little bit. And I think, gotcha. as Jerry said, all of the schools up and down the coast have basically um, have dealt with that. But now it's starting to come back, which is good. Gotcha. And I think Nate has his hand raised as well. Go cool again, Nate. Yeah, thank you. This is great information. I was curious, you know, some industries value experience over the education piece. And I was just curious. Uh, what are the growth paths in hospitality? And, uh, and then what is, what is valued most? Is it uh, years of experience that leads people to senior level positions or education or both? Or like, like how, does that, how does the advancement kind of work in the hospitality field? I think that it used to, you know, people used to say, oh, you don't need a degree to be in hospitality. You can just start working at a restaurant and get promoted and then you're a manager. And I think that is, a path. I think it's much of a, less of a path now than it used to be. And certainly the big employers are looking for people that have um, some background. Um, it doesn't have to be hospitality background. We try to make sure that you get both experience and the education so that when you're graduating, we're not putting people into entry level positions. I mean, 66,000 to start is what the MITs were, were um, getting just recently. So when, you know, if, especially if your parents are saying, well, you, could, you don't need a degree to go work in hospitality. Well, you do if you want to go the MIT route and work, work for a larger, larger company. So I, but I do think that experience in general, um, if you don't do anything when you're in college, then you might have to start at a, you know, at a, at a more entry level kind of a thing. We try to make sure that that doesn't happen in yeah, our program. We, we actually have work requirements. Um, and, and what ends up happening when you have the combination of work experience and the degree, our students just advance more quickly and that the data bears that out. They, they, they move up much more quickly, mostly because they have really great critical thinking skills and self-awareness self -awareness. because we do a lot of stuff to make sure that they're self-aware, they understand their strengths and weaknesses, and they're trying to um, develop those abilities before they graduate. And so the recruiters know kind of what our students are taught. And once they get into the organization, they, they just take off. And, and we're, we're always stunned by that. But both, both is really the way to go, certainly in hospitality. I think if you have just the education without the experience, good luck with that. I think you need both. And I think, you know, if you, want, if you have a really practical education, the work piece of it is a perfect marriage because now you really understand what that, the, the examples are and you understand what the, the discussions are because you're actually at work every day and you kind of see it. 
So I we probably don't do a very good job of doing kind of that technical training part of hospitality. We're much more of a leadership program that operates within the context of um, the experience yeah. economy. And I think that's why recruiters say, God, your students seem so much more mature. And that's because we encourage them to do that soft skill um, kind of kind of stuff and, and get feedback and talk about who they are and all that, all the kinds of things that, you know, us old folks would say are life skills that are important. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you guys have a couple of questions in the chat. Okay, let's see what we got. I saw a master. What about masters? So if, if the question is, do you need a master's to be successful? I know in at some point you might, it might be that you do. I know when I worked, um, you couldn't be a general manager if you didn't have a master's or MBA, actually. Everybody went and got um, an MBA. Um, I think in the meeting and event industry, they're very right now kind of how many letters do you have after your name a little bit? Um, and so I think that kind of education more than a master's maybe for for going into more traditional kind of meeting and events i would say i always think that getting a master's is great but not after you not until after you've done some right. work for a while and and see you know if you're really are ready to go back to get some more education and hopefully your your employer would pay for it as well you can you can it, you use the education so much more uh, effectively when you've actually worked for a while everything just makes it makes more sense so going right after you graduate we, we try to advise against that, work for a couple of years and then, then go back. So what Kimberly, was that your question about the master's or was your question, do you have a master's? Because we do have a master's degree, if that was your question. It's okay to unmute your mics, folks, as well. So I see we have a hand raised, <laughs> uh, Brad Pelletier. Hi, um, this is Kim. No, well, I'm 50, I'm 55 and I went back to school and I actually just finished my bachelor's degree, but I took the meeting and e the professional certificate and meeting and event planning there, like right before COVID. Uh -huh. And so then during COVID, I finished my bachelor's degree um, that you. I had started 35 years ago. So like for me, I personally don't have like all this time to go do this and that, you know, I mean, I've worked in restaurants and then I was a bartender before I, you know, yeah, for sure. kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I took, took, am taking care of and took care of my mother, which is what has allowed me to take all these classes. Um, so like for me, the experience isn't there. Now I have the time. Would you say, go get that master's degree? I just graduated like from national, like a month ago. I would say yes, because it's going to help you get a job. And so get one that you know, like, so we, ours is very much, there's, we have a cohort of maybe there's 30 people who are already working in the meetings and events industry. So uh -huh. you're taking classes with those people. They're going to be, they're going to be your be best networking kind of <laughs> collection. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a ton of money for one. I wouldn't go to Columbia or something like that. I mean, I would find one that was a, a more executive education kind of one for for adult learners but i think that the contacts that you would make would be really valuable mark what uh, do you think kimberly the you want to be an event planner is that kind of what you're well that that was yeah that was where i started and then of course when like i said while i was taking those that doing that certificate with you guys um the industry took a nosedive and then now i'm taking no, no. care of my mom too no. you know just just circum life circumstances and my what, age, I would, but. what I would what I would throw out there is I think um, it would be invaluable for you to get more industry experience, specifically in event planning. And the reason for it is that the skill set for event planning is really different than it is in general hospitality. It's it's very much project management and organization. A lot of people think event planning is you know just picking colors or something. It's not. It's you, you're you're working your list and you're keeping very organized. The other thing is in our masters in particular, we want you working because we want you to use the tools that you're getting at your job. So you're really maximizing the stuff you're learning by using it at work. And then when you come back in, you have stories to tell about what you did at work. So I think the two of them work really well together. Gotcha. So, so it doesn't have to be even full-time, even if you're doing, if you're working part-time, right? And then you do something that's online or um, something that's a hybrid, that's kind of an ideal combo. Yeah. Especially in my situation. Yeah. The, ne the next piece, just since you have all this extra time, is to join like HSMAI or an industry organization and go to their meetings or their, you yeah. know, just their monthly meetings or something. Again, networking wise, just connecting with people. What was that? HS HSMAI, which is the Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International, maybe. That's where a lot of meeting planners um, 
HSMAI, yeah, a lot of meeting planners. And then MPI, Meeting Professionals International, also pretty active in San Diego, Those both of those chapters. Uh, you don't, you want to try to join as a student because it's very, very cheap and yeah. it's very expensive if you're not a student. So you want to try to get someone to sponsor you as a student in some way. This is some really good advice. I'm just jumping in to note, uh, we do have a hand raised, Brad Pelletier, if you want to unmute your mic. And then students, if you haven't already, please do go to the chat at the bottom and click that link and you'll see a spreadsheet. There's a blue column there where you can add your instructor name who offered extra credit for you to attend today. So please do that to make sure you get that extra credit. I'm going to put that link in the chat in the chat one more time. Your chat this access one. should be at the bottom of your device to access okay. that. And Nate, we, there's a question in the chat the screen, too from yeah. William Collins. Okay. And I just want to say thank you guys for your advice. You're welcome. Anytime. What's up, Brad? Brad. How are you doing, everybody? Um, I've been in the restaurant and hospitality industry for 20 plus years now. I worked at the Ocean Reef Club in Key Largo, Florida for a few years. I've worked for Hilton, uh, Marriott, so the list goes on. Now, I've always been the back of house because I have my culinary arts degree and have been able to like weasel my way into front of the house and, you know, see how hospitality is, concierge, and stuff like that. Now, I noticed that you said that there are more branches now than there were, let's say, 10 years ago, like the trumpeteer and stuff like that. How, how broad does it go now? How broad does it go? Was that the question? Yes. Like, how, how much more can I, because I don't want to do the cut and dry okay, I'm a general manager of a hotel because I've seen that help out and, you know, don't even want to touch you with a 10 foot ball. But I want to see if, if I can stay hospitality, I would like to. But right now I'm torn between doing supply chain management, which I did in the free court, or staying in the hospitality route. So I'm trying to weigh my options. Right. I, so the, the bulk of the jobs are still sort of in the traditional management tier um, and then again, those business functions. So you have all the operations jobs, which you seem to have a really comfortable level of understanding with, right? So anything that's related to guest service, anything related to rooms, um, food and beverage and so on. And then there's obviously the restaurant industry and event planning industries. Those other jobs tend to be things that um, connect back to these sort of, not exotic, but enhanced guest experiences. So I, I think you... It's, it's some, someone passionate about something other than just the hospitality industry, and they've been able to link together their passion for beer with a particular gig that opened up or their passion for chocolate and, and then try to apply it there. But I guess my question for, I would ask you is, what, it, what are you passionate about? I, that's, where I, that's where I would go. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go based on where the jobs necessarily are because- you could end up in a job that you really just don't like very much. I, I, I would say, what do you really like doing? I mean, if you could do something for free, what would you do? Well, I actually just um, two years ago uh, opened my first brick and mortar and had to close down in September uh, due to COVID. Our numbers weren't there and we just couldn't stay afloat. What kind of business? Um, uh, it was a restaurant in Escondido. Okay. Did you like it? Was and that were you passionate? I, 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 I love cooking. I, I will never give it up. I've learned so much. I've cooked with so many different people and, you know, having my own business just to see people smile at the food that they're eating, you know, made, made all of it worth it. All the years of, you know, grinding and working for minimum wage in kitchen. What I would say, Brad, is that there, that is an area where there are branches that, you know, didn't necessarily exist quite as much. I mean, you, you could do things from a food truck to a kiosk to a, a food cart or a brick and mortar restaurant or a pop-up restaurant or um, work in a restaurant and a hotel. I mean, th there's so many options there. Um, I've always found it's about where I work that made the difference. The people that were there, the managers, the leadership style, was I valued? Um, those are the kinds of things that are always really important. The food piece will sort of always be there for you. But if you like being your own manager, there's no reason why you can start a little bit smaller and then just as it, get, it it hits, start to go up and go up and go up. Start doing private catering, 
right? Where you're, you, you do both front and back of the house. You hire your own small team, right? And you have these people but, them come together. That's kind of where I'm getting at. Like I've already done all that. I've gotten the, the OJT on probably 90%. We're taking a bachelor's in hospitality be worth it after spending so much time doing, you know, front and back of the house, working for hotels, or helping concierge, doing all that stuff. That's, I guess that's what my question is. Would it be beneficial to do that when I already have all the OJT? So do you, do you feel comfortable with all the, the um, accounting that, that's kind of related for restaurants, food and beverage, labor, cost control, that kind of thing? The P&L statements, I've done all that. Okay, so you, you're comfortable with it? Yeah. The, the one thing I would say that, that you'd have to ask and um, only you can answer is your leadership. And how good are you with people? How, how are you able to build the kind of culture that you want? Um, do you yeah. cultivate loyalty? Well, and, and hey, hey, Brad, can yes? I connect you? Can I connect you with um, Mark and Lori yes, let's online? Do that. Sure, no problem. Okay, cool. Thank you. I just want to make sure that we yeah, get to everyone. Oh my cool. gosh, it's five fifty-one. We're having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one question. There's one question that's been in the chat for like twenty minutes. All right, which one? Oh, what is it? So it's from William and it's, what is the best piece of advice you can offer for applying to SB, SDSU? I have a background in the restaurant and hospitality industry and studying business admin to do more. Planning on a fall transfer 2024. Hmm. What do you got? Come, come make, have a visit and come, come yeah. over and see us and bring your transcript and let us take a look at it. And then, and let us give you some honest advice about, you know, what your chances are getting in, but make a connection with us. Come see us. Corrine, I think she could be somebody that you could set up a meeting with and she could take a look at your stuff um, and, you know, come talk to our students and, and see if it's going to work out for you. Um, it's, if the if the barrier if the bar it, it depends on how high the barriers barriers are in terms of the combo of the you know can you get in but I think that you know we're people that are approachable so come talk to us yeah we have, couch, we have couches in our office and students just congregate there and hang out it's the same kind of thing the more you build relationships with people that makes a big difference relative to sending an email and I'm gonna just interrupt. I'm just here to be the connector, but uh, William and, and anyone else on this call, I just had a student today that's a transfer student from Mesa. He's applying and he made an appointment with one of our peer advisors. You don't have to do that because we're meeting you now, but uh, to come in and he's, he's gonna come back on the couches trying to talk to students about their experience and what they liked about the school. And I talked to him about courses and um, if you transfer in as uh, one emphasis area, can you uh, change and how do you do that without adding more time to your, uh, your, ten your time here? So um, we had great conversation I, and I thanked him for having the tenacity to come in and, and just want to talk and see where he may be next fall. So awesome. it's an open door. Awesome. Yeah, good. All right. Other questions? Morning messages. I don't see any hands. I don't see Let's, let's Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't see any hands and I don't see anything else in the chat. This was a very informative meeting. Yeah, as I wrote in the chat earlier in this meeting, I'm planning on Right now, I'm currently, as a business major, I'm currently leaning toward a career in marketing. So that's why I decided to go to this, attend this meeting today, because I saw something about being a marketing manager at Marriott Hotel. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was in the advertisement. And we're Perfect. small, and so we'll talk to you. You might be a number if you go to a business school sometimes. Yeah. If they're so, they get so big, it's tough to get personal attention. Definitely. Thanks for letting us hang out with you. Yeah, yes. it was fun. Yeah, thank, thank you guys so much. Um. Yeah, email. Yeah, Kar um, Karine, could you put your email in the chat sure. possibly? Or we could actually, we could also follow up. Sure, I can do it. And then uh, it's right. Lori and there. I have our emails right on the screen there. Oh, yep. Perfect. There you go. All right. Oh, DSW. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good thing. That was Mark. You, you can see your stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that. Someone I was, I was shopping. out of it. I was turning off the screen. <laughs> There we go. All right. Go Padres. Oh. Last thing I there we say. go. Thank you all for letting us be here. Oh, thank you guys Here's for coming. Everybody.
this was a really fantastic session and we really, you know, hopefully uh, it's got you guys, maybe some of you thinking about potentially transferring to San Diego state for hospitality. It's, it's, you know, there are just so many opportunities and it's there, you know, and, and Mark and Lori are right. It's really about, you know, the, the, the life that you want to craft for yourself. Right. Yep. And, and what fits well for you. All right. Cheers, everyone. All right. Good night. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.